to look at a legal problem called lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. So given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the tree. Um, basically, a lowest common ancestor basically means that we're given a P and Q, like two nodes. We want to find the lowest node in T that has both P and Q, right, as descendants. So we will allow a node to be a descendant of itself. <clears throat> So you can see we have a tree, right? So you can see that we have P and Q. We want to find the lowest common ancestor. So basically the lowest um, node um, that has both P and Q as the descendant. And the current node can also be a descendant of itself too, right? So you can see we have three as the lowest common ancestor because the left side has a five, the right side has a one, right? So in this case, we return the node that is the parent, the lowest common uh, low and lowest um, common ancestor, right? Which is node three. Now here you can see we have another example, like we have P, which is five, Q, which is a four. So in this case, we're trying to find the lowest common ancestor, but in this case, it's just gonna be node five because node five is um, the parent of node five and node four, right? Node three is not because the right side does not have it. Right, the left side has it, and then for node five, the current node does equal to P or Q, right? And we know that in the constraints, all the values are unique, and P and Q will exist in the tree, right? And P does not equal Q. So in this case, if we found one of them, like if we found P or if we found Q along the way, we can we can safely say that this is our common ancestor, right? Um, so for example, if P is three and Q is four, right? If we, we found that the current node is equal to P or Q, we can safely to say that this is a common ancestor, right? We don't have to go down anymore as, as long as we found that this is a node that we're, uh, that, that is equal to P or Q, right? So, um, how can we be able to solve this problem? Well, let's take a look at another example, right? So if I have one and two, P is one, Q is two. So in this case, the common ancestor is one, right? So it makes sense. So how can we be able to solve this problem? Okay. Um, so to solve this problem, what we can do, in this case, for this example, what we have to do is uh, we have to do a post-order traversal, right? Because in this case, the root node doesn't equal to P and Q, right? So what we had to do is we had to do a post-order traversal and post-order traversal means that we traverse the left side the right side and the current node, right? So in this case, uh, we have to traverse the left side to see if P and Q does, does exist, right? If P and Q does exist and the right side P and Q does exist, then we know that we just have to return this node because this is the com common ancestor. If only one side exists, then we just have to return the node that was passed back to the root, right? So in this case, let me give you an example, right? So we know that we go down. In this case, we have node five. So node five in this case does equal to P and Q. So we just have to return node five, right? Because in this case, node five is the common ancestor. We know that P and Q will exist in the subtree, right? In the tree. So we don't have to go down and search, right? If, if it does equal to P and Q, then we just return this node. Um, but let's say we have an example like this, right? Where we have node five and node zero. Um, in this case, we know that root does not equal to P and Q. So we go down the left side and search. We know that this node, right, does equal to node five. So in this case, we, we return node five. And then we continue to search for Q, right? So in this case, we continue to search for um, for the other node. So we go down, so we go down the right side because in this case, node five is here, right? And we know that go down to the right side. So in this case, we have node one. No one, we do a post order traversal, we just traverse the left. Left zero is equal to no, is equal to Q. So we return zero. And the right side in this case doesn't equal to anything, so we return it all. And then in this case, this is not a leaf, uh, the common ancestor because in this case, there's only one side that doesn't equal to null. So we return the node that doesn't equal to null, in this case, node zero. And then now we know node three, the left side is, does, does not equal to null, and the right side doesn't equal to null. That means that this is a common ancestor out of those two, right? So in this case, we can just return node three instead, right? If there's only one side, right? For example, if the, the node zero doesn't even exist, the node zero exists somewhere on the left, and we're returning null, right? 
we, we, we know that for sure that this node is not, a, is not a common ancestor, right? We know that this node, uh, the left side does not equal null, then we have to return the left side, okay? So pretty simple. Um, basically, we know that Q and P does exist in the tree, so we can do this recursively. Um, so we first check to see for the base case, right? If we, uh, if the root is null, we can just return null. Um, if current root equal to P or Q, then we can just return the root. And then we do a post order traversal, which is the left side, the right side, to see uh, if we can be able to find P or Q, right? Um, if we find it, we return it. So in this case, if both left and right does not equal null, then we can just return the root. Otherwise, what we have to do is we have to either return the left side or the right side, right? If the left side doesn't equal null, we just return the left. Otherwise, we just return the right. And you can see this is how we solve the problem. And the time complexity for this one, it will be um, big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our tree. And the space complexity in this case is going to be big O of h, right? We're going to rec we're recursively um, going down to the um, to the down to to, uh, to traverse the tree, and basically the space complexity is number of call stacks that um, that we're going to call, right? So that will be basically the height of the tree, right? So there you have it, and thank you for watching.